yeah, thank you for the floor and for the opportunity to present our project LIMOC Learning Mobility in Times of Climate Change. Um, so, first of all, um, I'd like to introduce to you um, a little bit the background of this project, um, also to understand the focus we have on this two years project. Um, so, in general, um, I think you most probably discussed all these facts that are on this slide, but just briefly um, to summarize it, um, climate change has become one of the most severe threats the world of today has to face. Um, harmful effects of traveling on the world climate have become obvious. Um, words or terms like flight shame are in our uh, vocabulary now. Um, especially young people have actively taken up this issue and have brought it to the public. Um, Fridays for Future um, would be the um, word for it. Um, consequently, youth work and youth mobility for learning purposes are increasingly affected by questions of environmental compatibility and climate change. And the topic has also been taken up politically at both European and international level. Um, I think one of a very good example is the Green Erasmus, um, you most probably all know. So, in the end, we can say youth organizations feel a growing need to make their activities fit for the future. So, this is a quite general ter term, um, make their activities fit for the future. Um, well, let's see what LIMOG focuses on. So, um, the development of the project idea started in 2020, when EAP organized um, a row of international project labs with its member organizations and its international partners. Um, they were invited to discuss about um, current um, and maybe also upcoming topics um, regarding international youth work or learning mobility is the better term here in this context. And one of the central topics was the issue of sustainability and climate change. Um, I just summarize you the yeah, original wording uh, from this international, international project labs, just to say I'm not so happy dividing between sustainability and climate change, but this is another discussion just to mention it. And the main questions um, in this project labs um, regarding this topic was, how can activities of international youth mobility become more sustainable? What do young people expect of environmental friendly mobility programs? And how is the topic discussed at European and international level and which organizations are already experienced and interested in sustainable youth mobility? So this was more or less the basis um, for this project learning mobility in times of climate change. And as you can see on the slide, it's like words like sustainability, sustainable, environmental friendly, climate change, they're all going, yeah, they're all there and not very in order. Um, so we decided um, when we um, developed the concrete project concept to focus definitely on the topic of climate change, so on the on a more environmental aspect um, of this whole sustainability um, yeah, concept. Because otherwise, um, with a two years project and with such a budget that we have, it won't be possible to tackle all the necessary issues and topics and it so, and it's also, it won't be the right context to um, target this. So, we focus really on the topic of climate change and the objectives of the project is, first, we want to collect knowledge about good practice, projects and stakeholders in the field of sustainable learning mobility on international level. 
Second, we want to gain insights how to design international youth work projects bearing in mind questions of sustainability and protection of environment. And third, we want to develop recommendations for organizations and stakeholders within international youth mobility, both in practice and in policy making or agenda setting. Um, and we have two main project elements. One is the youth consultation and one is the mapping. Um, before I go a little bit more into detail regarding this youth consultation and the mapping, so the core of uh, the LAMOP project, um, just some data. Our project runs until end of next year, so it's a two years project. Um, we have fund by the Federal Ministry for Families, Senior Citizens, Women and Youth. Um, we do the whole project online. Um, this is um, on the one hand very challenging, I have to say, because of course we are a big group of partners. We don't know us all by previous projects. So yes, this is a challenge, I have to say, but in the end, of course, if you're looking on the list of involved partner organizations or partner countries, you um, yeah, might get a feeling that it could be a good idea doing all, um, all the meetings online because otherwise we would have a high um, yeah, need of uh, flying over the, half, over half of the planet. <laughs> so we cooperate um, with um, partners from China, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Turkey and the United Kingdom. The partner organizations differ very much in their size, structure, aims and main focus of work. So we have either um, organizations from the um, voluntary sector as from the public sector, big organizations, small organizations, and they are either active in the field of international youth work or environment protect. So, but now um, let's have a closer look on the two main project elements. As I think the youth consultation is definitely one of the most important project element we have, as this project element allows us to ask the young people what their needs are regarding a more environmental friendly learning mobility or a learning mobility that takes into account climate change issues. Um, and for this, um, as first two step, um, we did or we are doing um, a youth consultation. Um, step one was an online survey. It was conducted um, during summer this year and it targeted young people interested in international learning mobility and in climate protection. Um, this online survey was distributed all partner countries and in the respected languages. So we really translated it into seven languages that really every interested person could participate in this online service and we didn't want to yeah, make, um, yeah, we didn't want to announce it in English because otherwise um, there are some partner countries where we would might have risked that a certain group of young people won't participate in this online service due to the lack of um, language, yeah, of English language knowledge. So the second step, so this survey um, was in summer, we ended it in August. Um, the team of researchers is still um, yeah, working on the results of this survey. So we are really excited to see the results by end of the year. Um, but this is not the only thing or the only element of the youth consultation. We will now have in November um, 
four different focus groups um, with up to 28 young uh, participants, so approximately four from each partner country. Well, this is the objective. We might not get four young people from each partner country, but we try to, um, to be successful in this meeting. We'll see. Um, this will be conducted in English language, um, in fact, because it won't be possible to, we would have more um, interpreters than uh, young participants in this focus group if we would integrate interpretations, so we decided to do it in English. Um, this youth consultation is conducted by a team of researchers from the University of Hildesheim, um, Professor Wolfgang Schröer and Ist. Oh, yeah, and as I said, we expect the results of this youth consultation by end of the year, and the report will be in English and in German. So the next project element is the mapping, um, and as I heard before, the EPLM is also planning a map of good practices, and I think, um, yeah, this we should might be in touch um, regarding this your mapping because we also plan to have a mapping. Um, it should provide an overview about existing climate sensitive youth mobility policies, youth mobility actors and good practices with a focus on our partner countries I've already mentioned. Um, it should inspire policymakers and practitioners um, and it should foster also peer to peer learning in this field. Um, we also would like want to facilitate partner search for climate sensitive youth mobility projects with this mapping. Also encourage new projects, of course, and facilitate networking and future exchange of good practice. So it's more or less three different pillars. It's policy development in the countries, including support mechanism and also funding schemes that could be used for climate sensitive learning mobility activities. Um, the second pillar will be an overview um, about main actors and organizations. And last but not least, examples of good practice. We plan to have two to three examples each country. It will be um, an online publication and we also um, are going to focus on non-formal learning mobility. Um, you might know that in some countries the um, learning mobility in the field of formal education is sometimes also of high importance, So, but we said we really want to focus on non-formal learning sector. Yeah, so this is already it. Um, many thanks for your kind attention and I'm really looking forward to your concerns and questions and remarks and to discuss a little bit with you about this um, yeah, very challenging topic. Thank you.